Hello, blessed day to everyone. I'd like to welcome uh, you all to this uh, Sunday School Online. This is your friend on uh, Facebook attorney, Peter Labib. And I am discussing the subject, the way to give honorably to God. Well, the principles of... Uh, honorable giving as uh, taught in the scriptures and um, basically in the discussions that uh, we had in the last two uh, segments I discuss about uh, biblical principles on how we can give honorably to God and we we said that uh, the Bible is uh, teaching us that giving in order for the for for it to be honorable to God should it should be done systematically there should be a system no and the Bible gives us uh, an example of a systematic giving according to first Thessalonians chapter 16 verse number 2 says here upon the first day of the week let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him that there be no gatherings when they come this this is more of uh, um, it's more of tangibles or treasures money no so um, the Christians in the Gentile churches, they, they try to give whatever they can give uh, to the needy church in Jerusalem. So they want to become a part, um, they want to become a, an instrument to bless the needy Christians in Jerusalem. And so um, the Apostle Paul said that you have to do it upon the first day of the week because uh, it was already the time when the Christians, the New Testament believers, gathered to worship God on the first day of the week to honor uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which occurred on the first day of the week. The Apostle Paul said that uh, so that uh, when I come, uh, there will be no more gatherings. You will just deliver to me whatever you've gathered so that I can bring them to uh, the church in uh, Jerusalem. He said the fun, upon the first day of the week, it should be uh, done systematically. It involves timing, the first day of the week. Uh, and uh, as God has prospered him, meaning that uh, the moment you receive your income, um, you have to set aside a portion of which or portion of it to uh, for your giving and you have to do it uh, you have to prioritize it uh, because the chances are when you, when you do not um, separate right away uh, that the amount that pertains to your giving the chances are you will be able to spend no, the part of your income that uh, belongs to God. So you have to seek God first, and His kingdom set aside. No, and then uh, you have to you have to do it individually. It's not a family affair. It's an individual uh, who should give individually. Meaning, if you earn an income, if God has prospered you, you have the responsibility to return what belongs to God. And then you have to do it proportionately. Meaning that there should be a, a proportion. No? Uh, if we're going to follow the Old Testament uh, principle of proportion, it's 10%. No? Of course, there are other forms of tithes uh, that are not uh, 10%. It's more than it's 20% and, and more. No? But uh, the basic principle of a tithe, no? uh, if we're going to consider the meaning about tithe it's it's a tenth of uh, your income it's the tithe and you can you can 
use that as uh, uh, as your basis. But take note that tithing uh, is just, you know, you are not yet giving to God or you are not yet offering. You are just returning what belongs to God. Huh? Okay. So, and then proportionately, then cheerfully, you have to do it with joy. It's not that you, uh, you're just being forced. It's not grudgingly or of necessity, but it should be done with love, with cheerfulness. Because God loves a cheerful giver according to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 7. And then you have also to give sacrificially like uh, the giving of God, the, the, the example that God has given in His word about giving that he gave his all he gave his only begotten son no that is a great sacrifice on the part of god so if you're going to uh learn from that form of giving that is so what is meant by sacrificial giving you gi give uh the giving that hurts is, a, is already a sacrificial giving meaning that you um the the one that is left in your pocket is is smaller than the amount that you gave to the coffers no, of the church. No? Of course, uh, as I said, it's not always about money. It may involve also about talents, about your your personal, uh, your, your body, your human body no, that can be used uh, for the ministry of the Lord. Okay. And then you have to do it secretly, meaning you, you don't have to shout you don't have to let the house stop to hear it, no? Do not uh, let the left hand know what is the right hand is doing, no? Because uh, in that way, when you do, when you give to God secretly, you, God will reward you openly. And you have to, have to give bountifully, because he that sow it bountifully shall reap also bountifully. He that sow it sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Do you want to be, uh, to be blessed? Do you want to receive more? You give more. That is the principle. And then you have to give purposefully, meaning that you have to learn the facts, uh, the needs of the church, the needs of uh, the, the ministers in the church, the needs of the mission field, in order for you to, uh, to base your purpose of giving on, on these facts. Okay? So that's why uh, you have to listen you have to be open for uh, information okay and this morning uh, we're going to talk about the benefits of an honorable giving what are the benefits when you give honorably what are the benefits what what, what are the advantages uh, that can be derived out of your honorable giving in mark chapter 16 verse number 15 it's about uh, the preaching of the gospel to every creature how can the missionary reach the mission field without a financial support or support on prayer support uh, on moral support huh? uh, so when people the people of god give the work of god gets done Okay, uh, there are preachers who we can hear saying that in a mission, there can be a mission without O, in referring to money. No? But even if there is money, if there is a mission field without a missionary who will surrender his life, there will be no more uh, the, the, the process no? of... Uh, bringing the gospel evangelization will not uh, happen and uh, if there is that money there is the, the missionary if he's not sent by the church he will not be blessed that's why uh, the missionaries are being sent by the church they are given the, the authority to, to preach the gospel to the regions beyond huh? so that is one of the advantages when you give the work of God is uh, the, work, the work of God gets done. If you will not give, it will not be done. It will always be undone. And the uh,
coming of the Lord is uh, it's getting near and uh, the gospel has to be brought throughout the whole world and uh, when you do not give you are not lining yourself with the uh, the plan of God to bring the good news to the whole world so that he will already come and then God rewards the giver openly so when you give secretly God will reward you openly what what form of rewards will God give you it may not be in, in the form of uh, money or in the form of um, any other monetary remuneration but it could be in the form of health in the form of peace in the form of protection in the form of uh, prosperity in your in your business no? these are the ways that God would recompense our love or our our cheerful giving no? so God rewards the giver openly and uh, God gives more grace to him who gives gives more grace no? according to second corinthians chapter 8 verse number one this is the grace of giving you no know, that was practiced by uh, the church in macedonia in spite of their uh, deep poverty and persecution and trial of affliction they were willing of themselves to uh, to be a blessing you no know, to give out of their poverty why god gave them the the grace the grace of giving uh, that, that's the reason why they were able to do it even beyond their power huh? and then uh, when you give God uh, gives you more joy no huh? God gives you more joy when you give say the people who are givers are the happiest people in the world not the uh, not those who who do not give no? they're a miserable people those who do not give compared to those who give the givers are the happiest people in in this uh, whole wide world okay why is that because it's god who gives them the joy it's part of the promise of god to give us more no when we give it may not be in the form of money but it could be in the form of joy that God gives you more. As you give more, God will give you more joy in your life. He increases his, his faith. See, when, when you give, um, you increase your faith. It is one of the, the tests that uh, we can... Uh, we can employ you not know, to determine whether a believer is a growing growing believer or not when a person is already uh, cheerfully giving that person is already mature in his faith and he has learned how to put his faith uh, in the lord jesus christ meaning he is already uh, starting to be mature in his faith those who do not give they are still immature they are carnal but those who, who give cheerfully, the giving indicates that they're already uh, mature or they are on the way to maturity. So, increases faith when you give. It produces fellowship with other churches uh, given to. Meaning that if Church A gives a financial help to Church B, who is in dire need for example they will they need uh, a a big sum of money to purchase a property in church a uh, gave a share for the money to be produced what does it mean it creates fellowship meaning that the church uh, that was able to acquire a property because church a 
uh, extended help, uh, it somehow will create a bond for Church A and Church B. No, it will always be a part of the history of Church B that it's Church A that uh, extended help so that uh, Church B was, was able to acquire a property. It, it now establishes a bond or a fellowship uh, of these two churches. Now that is uh, a, the benefit of giving. But when you do not give, when Church A does not extend help to Church B, there will be no more no more bond or no more fellowship that will be created. And then it proves the sincerity of the love of a believer. That's, that's already, we discussed it in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 8, to prove the sincerity of your love. And uh, one way to prove that love for to God is by giving. And then uh, he follows Christ's example of giving. When you give, you're just uh, following the example of Jesus Christ. And what is the example of Jesus? He gave his own life for us. See? Gave himself. He gave his blood. No, He gave his own life so that we will be saved. So he became poor that we might be rich. He died that we might live. That is the kind of giving that Jesus has uh, exemplified. No? And uh, we ought also to learn from that uh, way uh, of giving that Jesus has already has shown us. Now, uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 15 and 16, we'll find that uh, when there is giving, there is, a, it produces equality. Why equality? Those who have much, uh, will not lack and those who lack will have much huh? because the church that has a lot of blessings will be sharing that blessing to the church in need just like uh, these gentile churches uh, they gave something to help the believers in uh, Jerusalem. So it, it produces equality. And then uh, it shows earnest care of fellow believers. Meaning that when you give, you care for the believers in need. Because certainly the uh, what you have given will be able to reach uh, the believers in need. So there is that, that shows that you care for those uh, believers. And then what else? Uh, it provokes many others to give also. See, when, when a person gives and there are other people who saw um, the, the act of giving, they, they will be provoked also to, uh, to give because they, they see believers who are happily giving, lovingly giving uh, to God. So because of that example, the other believers are just, you know, looking for uh, examples coming from other believers will be challenged, you know, will be provoked to also give. So um, it is very important. If we give bountifully, we will reap also bountifully. That's, that's the principle there. So when you give bountifully, you will also be recompensed bountifully. That, that is a, a living principle in the, in the scriptures. No? And then God loves the giver more. See, it, does not, it only does not teach us that God gives more joy to the giver. God loves more the giver. For as long as the giver gives his gift cheerfully with love with a good purpose in his heart not grudgingly god will love him more okay? and then uh, god makes all grace abound toward the giver kasi ganito po yon yung mga taong hindi nagbibigay 
eh, para silang naglalagay ng kanilang mga mga material blessings o kaya kahit anumang treasures or talents or whatever para silang naglalagay noon sa isang basket na may uh, isang container na butas na pag inilagay nila lumulusot lang hindi actually naiipon no kita mo yung mga yung mga believers na hindi nagbibigay kahit anong makita dun sa mall binibili mula silang wisdom pagdating sa bahay din naman pala nila kailangan kailangan yun nabili nila so wala silang wisdom but if a person is practicing giving God gives them wisdom God gives them uh, the the things to buy to distinguish between need and want no so talagang napaka napakahalaga yung pagbibigay and then uh, your testimony becomes steadfast and fruitful tandaan po natin mga kaibigan na yung mga taong nagbibigay sila po yung mga gandang testimony sa church mga sila po ay mga malakas sa kanilang pananampaltaya no sapagkat sila ay pinagpala ng Panginoon dahil sila ay nagbibigay sa gawain and then God will enrich us in all things it's the opportunity of God when you have need uh, to bless you to enrich you and He will certainly do it because that is promise no? it will cause many people to thank and glorify God there will be a lot of people who will thank God because uh, of your giving or it, it could be a means of answering the needs of other people no they are praying other people are praying for uh, for example a money to help in their financial need especially for example hospital bills they need they're praying for people who will be kind-hearted to uh, help them in their financial needs no and your giving will be an answer to their prayer and uh, our giving will also be a means of depositing treasures in heaven no laying treasures in heaven it's not a loss it is actually just you're just like uh, in a bank it may not be in your possession but it is in the possession of the bank and here uh, the the bank is in heaven and uh, when you give you are laying or you are actually depositing your treasures in heaven okay so the principle of giving will be nothing huh? without us uh, thinking on the kind of giving that God has exemplified to us that he gave his only begotten son it's a purposeful giving because uh, it has a purpose what's the purpose of God's giving in order for the Lord Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our salvation no it's a uh, it's not only purposeful giving but it's a blessed giving why because it will be a way to bless a lot of people in in this earth no it is a sacrificial giving because uh, God has uh, given his only begotten son it is a uh, a cheerful giving because God bases giving on love okay it is uh, a giving that has an eternal value because it, it eternal life is the uh, is the gift that uh, is the result of this giving of God no? of, of the Lord Jesus Christ so what should we do in order to respond to this love of God first of all uh, if you are not yet the child of God you have to open your heart in faith no? and to invite him to come into your life forsake your self-righteousness forsake your trust on your religion trust on your good works 
for you to go to heaven. You have to trust in Jesus. Sabi niya sa John 16, Whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. It's believing in Him that is important. No? It is the uh, condition that God has uh, set, prescribed no? in His Word for this giving of God to be profitable to us. And what is the profit? Eternal life, salvation. It's believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So, as our conclusion in this uh, in this topic, honorable giving, we should understand <coughs> that uh, we do not lose anything when we give. On the contrary, we gain more. It is more blessed to give than to receive. But we have to give in accordance with the biblical principles <coughs> to the biblical narrative and prescriptions. Otherwise, our giving, just like the, the offering of Abel, will be in vain. And especially when you are not yet a child of God, your giving will be nothing. No? And uh, when we give, we give to God through the church so that the ministry uh, and the minister will also be fruitful because a workman is worthy of his labor. But if you're not yet a child of God, your giving will be rejected like that of Cain. You have to become a child of God first before your giving will benefit to your account. We'll end here our lesson. I hope you learn uh, something uh, in the Sunday school and the principles that we have uh, discussed. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless us all. God bless the Philippines. God bless everyone. Amen and amen.